In 2008, people all across the United States came together in a community science effort called the Great Sunflower Project. They planted lemon queen sunflowers and other pollinator-friendly plants, or went to nearby gardens and preserves, counted pollinators, and uploaded their data online for scientific analysis. Through hours of work by hundreds of community scientists, from middle school students to professional entomologists, we began answering questions about pollinator behavior and declines. Visitors to Jenkins Arboretum and Gardens joined the project in 2023 borrowing kits with all the supplies necessary to count pollinators and recording their observations for Jenkins staff to upload to the Great Sunflower Project's website. Pollinator observations are particularly useful when they're made in the same place over a long period of time because they be can be compared to one another to see how pollinator activity changes from week to week and year to year. Together, the community of visitors to Jenkins Arboretum and Gardens is gathering a story of the local pollinators. We're discovering how Jenkins and other local gardens can better support them. If you have a half hour to spare and an interest in watching pollination in action, you can join in. You can find everything you need to make a pollinator count for the Great Sunflower Project at Jenkins on the Cart and the Education Center. In each tote bag, you'll find a clipboard, a map of observation sites in the gardens, a quick pollinator ID guide, a couple of pencils, and a small timer. Add one or more of the blank data sheets from the top shelf of the cart, and you're ready to go. There are three observation sites in the gardens. The map on your kit will guide you to the sections of the gardens in which they are. Once you're in the right area, you'll see the site marked with a large model of a bumblebee. The flowers you'll focus on have blue ribbon tied around their stems. Each site focuses on a different sort of flower, and the flowers will change over the season, so you could come back every couple of weeks to compare pollinator activity on different flowers. Setting up your data sheet is a key part of collecting information to help pollinators. Start with the date. This lets scientists analyzing Great Sunflower Project data track pollinator activity over the course of the year and compare pollinator counts between years. The start time lets us discover when, over the course of a day, different plants matter to different pollinators. The site number includes information about the type of flower and the quantity of blossoms that the count was made on. When your data sheet is ready, set the timer to 5 minutes and tally how many pollinator visits occur to the ribbon marked flowers in that time. If the same pollinator spends some time on a flower, leaves it, and then comes back for more nectar, that's counted as two. We're interested in how many visits happen, rather than how many pollinators make those visits. If you're not sure what a pollinator is, check the quick ID guide. If you don't see any pollinators, be sure to note this on your data sheet. No pollinators is some of the most important data the Great Sunflower Project receives. Be sure to record your observations during each new five minute count in a new section of the data sheet. Each data sheet has space on it for three different five minute counts, and you're welcome to take more than one data sheet if you'd like to do more. When you've observed for as long as you'd like, leave the tote bag on the cart ready for the next visitor and leave your completed data sheets in the bin on the middle shelf for us to digitize. Help yourself to a sticker and check out the Great Pollinator Protection resources and information on the Great Sunflower Project's website. Data collected by community scientists for the Great Sunflower Project has begun providing answers to several important questions about pollinators. How does the use of neonicotinoid pesticides affect nearby pollinator populations? What is pollinator service like across the United States? Where are pollinator declines the most concerning? What plants are most useful to pollinators? What should we plant in our gardens to attract them? The data you collect at Jenkins Arboretum and Gardens helps answer these questions, 
especially the question of the most useful plants to local pollinators. There are lots of pollinator-friendly plant lists on the internet and in books, but very few of these have been verified, and very few have been verified for different parts of the United States. For instance, we know that pollinators use common milkweed, but we don't know how important it is to a bee in Pennsylvania versus a bee in Wisconsin. Every ecosystem is different, so pollinators from different regions likely rely on the same plant species in different ways. Knowing which plants are used the most by pollinators at Jenkins will help conservationists in southeastern Pennsylvania create the most pollinator-friendly gardens possible. Keeping track of pollinator behavior takes a great deal of time and dedication. By working together to count pollinators on different plants all through the summer bloom season at Jenkins, we can learn a great deal about our local pollinator populations and truly make a difference for them. Learn more at the Great Sunflower Project website www.greatsunflower.org